Tuesday wasn't a big surprise to a lot of people, uh, the way the, 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 the election results turned out. I think the margins were a little bit larger than people anticipated. The margins were a lot bigger than I anticipated. Right. Even. On Friday before the election, I saw General Abbott and he said, don't tell anybody, but we're 13 points up. They're 20. I mean, that's, I yeah. don't think anybody anticipated the margins. Was, was he wrong, or did things just get worse for the Democrats between last week and, and Tuesday? I think a lot more people came out and voted at the end than historically. You know, but the turnout was atrocious. The turnout was horrible. 28.5% according to uh, the numbers I saw yesterday uh, were, were back to being worst in the nation in voter turnout. Which is unfortunate because I think people can't complain if they don't vote. I've always said that and I right. tell people to vote anyway. But we historically as Republicans, and we've watched the trend the last few cycles, we've always voted early. And the last couple of cycles, Republicans have started voting on election day for some weird reason. Right. So I think that they were w looking at what had happened historically and some numbers, and you'll have to ask them exactly what their numbers are. But I don't right. think anybody expected the landslide we got. Right. Hopeful for it, but not, not expected. Really, the, the surprise to the degree that there was a surprise was there were a couple of legislative seats in San Antonio and Houston that because the davis Vandepute campaigns were not as strong as had been expected in those communities, and in fact lost Harris County, lost Bear County, a couple of legislative seats flipped. Congressman Gallego mm -hmm. uh, flipped because both Bear County and El Paso County didn't turn out for the Democrats the way they anticipated. Those were really the meaningful well, byproducts. But, I, but I would argue that it wasn't yeah. the Democrats not doing their job. I'd argue that Republicans did their job. Really, you would argue that, would you? Right. Okay. Because, well, but here, here's the reality of what Republicans and the Republican Party did and part of what the victory effort was right. and part of what General Abbott's, yeah. uh, now Governor Abbott, it's nice to say that, yeah. um, campaign philosophy was let's put our people on the ground. We had field offices in Harris right. County and Bear County specifically in the now Will Hurd coming up seat. We had a field office in El Paso. Yep. And those races that you thought were surprises, we were watching anyway because we thought they had potential. Well, I think everybody thought that they were potentially going to flip, but again, you know, Senator Vandepute represents San Antonio. San Antonio the, Antonio the, assumption, the assumption was that Senator Vandepute would help. In fact, as recently as the day of the election, I had Republican consultants saying, well, Philip Cortez is probably in trouble and Pete Gallego is probably in trouble, but in the end, we think Vandepute's going to carry them over the line. But you haven't watched Bear County. Because I think, and, and it surprised me when I ran two years ago, Bear County is a straight 50-50 county. Right. And in so, fact, Mitt Romney won Pete Gallego's district in the last presidential that's election. That's right. So right. I think Bear County is a lot more Republican than people give it credit for. And I think the other fallacy of an election is yeah. that everybody assumes Hispanics are going to vote Democrat. Right. And they don't. Right. You can't have, and I think No more monolithic than any other voting group. That's correct. Right. And so... When you, as Republicans, we made a true effort. There were a million Hispanic outreach touches this cycle. Right. That was a real key for us and with Abbott's campaign. That was a goal. Yeah. Um, but not just Hispanic voters, but that was a target area right. this cycle. And you, get, you start talking about your Republican and my Republican values, that we are fiscally conservative, we have the same family values, and, and, and Democrats go, well, that's not really what my values are, and they shift and they vote Republican. Right, so and so 44 percent is what I've heard General Abbott received in that uh, campaign. I'm not, I have not seen specific numbers on the Latino vote for other statewides, but you have to take that number as a, as a significant improvement over what we know was the, Lat I think Romney got below 30 percent of That's the right. Latino vote in Texas in 2012. That's right. right. We were hopeful if we could, he got, they wanted above 40. Right. I was hopeful if they got 35 plus that it would yeah. win in the state, so 44 is right. huge. How significant is it that uh, General Abbott uh, beat Senator Davis among w women? There have been a bunch of Democrats on suicide watch about this particular aspect of the election, but the reality is no Democratic candidate for governor has won the votes of women since Ann Richards in 1990 outright. Richards and Bush tied in 94. Mm -hmm. Since that, the Republicans have always won women. I don't see what the big deal is. I don't either. Yeah. I don't know what war on women is. I think some consultants made it up so it would be the right. buzzword for the campaign with the campaign cycle. You frankly. all were thinking all along that you were strong with women, and it, yes. so the outcome of this didn't necessarily surprise you. No, it didn't right. at all. Is there a larger takeaway about the, the medium-term political future of the state? I mean, the, we can litigate the successes or failures of Battleground Texas for as long as we want. This is really not about Battleground Texas. This is more about the question of whether the politics of Texas are soon going to shift perceptibly. And from this election, look, 
you know, Senator Davis's result was worse than Tony Sanchez's statewide, which I think if you had asked people six weeks or six months ago, nobody would have believed. The, the sense is that maybe rather than progressing forward perceptibly, that there's been a progression backward in this cycle. So how do you read this, this analysis? I think that might be a semi-fair analysis in the fact that Republicans finally realized they were complacent. Battleground Texas scared a bunch of us. Right. Uh, it made us get out and, and work like we haven't in a while. And, yep. and there's a, a new philosophy, I think, with the new candidates that are incoming too. Not that we had a bad philosophy, but for 15 years the Republican Party's been talking about let's outreach to Hispanics, let's outreach to people we need to outreach to. Yep. And this cycle we finally did it. Right. And once we did and started explaining what the message is, and look, you, you can't get away from the Texas miracle, and it's happening here. There right. are other states looking to do what we're doing. But the assumption, Chairman, was that the Texas miracle and whatever other appeal it might have for the Latino voter with regard to the Republican Party might have been trumped by things like illegal invasion, third world conditions, leprosy. You heard a lot of rhetoric early in the campaign that was assumed to be a turnoff for Latinos, but then comes the election day, there doesn't seem to be any indication that that's the case. Well, look, I don't know if you've been on the border recently, or especially Rio Grande Valley. Yeah. You've got 1.3 million people down in a four county area. Yeah. This is a significant piece of our population in this state, and they're growing every day. Yeah. But they see opportunities, but the other thing that if you're down there, you realize they want security on the border because they want safe communities. Right. So I don't think the conversation from our end has been leprosy, illegal immigration. I well, think it's, well, that much. Let me say from my end it's right. been. Yeah. I think it's let's make sure we have security on our borders, secure borders, and then let's figure out how we have some job creation. If right. oil and gas is an, a great opportunity for yeah. our border, friends, yeah. uh, because I think that's the opportunity to change the conversation.